What's up, what's up? Y'all doing all right? Okay, like seriously, y'all gonna have to put a little pep in your step, man. Yeah, woohoo, I'm alive. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. All right, hey, here's what I need you to do. This is gonna be inconvenient. You're gonna be like, well, why? And I'm gonna be like, but I don't care. So what I need you to do <clears throat> is I need you to stand up where you are, grab your chair, and then move it like four or 10 feet forward. All right, and go. Y'all are fine, y'all are fine, y'all are fine right there. Oh, okay. But y'all are not fine, y'all are fine. There's like three of you that are fine. <clears throat> So wait. Thank you for participating. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. Uh, second thing I'm gonna ask you to do, or I'm gonna encourage you to do really, because I'm not your mama, so I'm not really gonna make you do it. But uh, I encourage you to do it just for your own benefit. If you wanna pull your phone out, put that sucker on vibrate or silent. Uh, maybe put it on the ground or a purse or something away from you. <coughs> Um, we've been talking about this dating series, not dating series, really relationship series. And we've been kind of walking through, we've been walking through the stages of relationship. Uh, we, we introduced the series and then uh, we talked about singleness last week, if you um, remember. And really the thing we pointed out was that uh, one, God has a plan for your singleness. Um, that if you are uh, single and you're like, man, but I'm, I'm eager to find the one and only um, my before any other, like whatever, like God has a plan for your singleness <clears throat> and it's him developing you in your singleness, your uniqueness. We said singleness was your uniqueness, your individuality is that, is that that's what will be the biggest blessing to your future relationship. And so not to rush God's timing, but to enjoy the place that he has you right now. But tonight I want to talk about dating. <clears throat> I want to talk about what it looks like um, to date well <clears throat> what it looks like to know if you're in the right relationship right now, um, what it looks like to know if it's the uh, wrong time or um, wrong relationship, um, and, and how that kind of prepares us for lasting uh, relationship. Before I kind of go any further, I'm just going to um, pray for us real quick. You may or may not know this. You probably don't. Ben was actually supposed to speak tonight because he was like, man, this is... Um, on my heart, <clears throat> he's like, I, you know, I've had my good and my bad experiences with dating. He's like, and, and just recently, right, just being out of high school not too long, he's like, man, I want to speak. I was like, great, dude, let's do this. And so for like three weeks, we've been kind of preparing and gave me an outline this week. Like, we've really been looking at everything. And then at 3 a.m., I got it at, I, this morning at 6 a.m., I got a text from him that said 3 a.m. on it. And it said, I have been throwing up all night. I don't think I'm gonna make it in the morning. And I was like, that's disgusting. Um, <clears throat> I didn't say that. I was just like, I did a typical guy text. Like, dude, that sucks. <laughs> Get better? I don't know. Um, and then he texted me later today. He's like, yeah, it hasn't stopped. I don't think I'm making it tonight. And I was like, sweet. That's awesome because I prepared a zero for tonight. Um, <clears throat> so I really just sat down at my desk about three o'clock today and began to um, really consider you know, what, what does scripture call us um, to do and to be in our dating relationships. Uh, and so just know um, that you are here for a reason, that um, I am here for a reason. Um, and so I just ask that you'd use this time, that you'd take it seriously, that um, you would listen, that if you are dating someone and you're next to them, that you may not, maybe just don't hold their hand, just like, just like, have your space for a minute, have your spot, where it's you just listening, you tuning in, you considering the way that the Lord would speak to you um, this evening. Cool, let's pray. <clears throat> God, I thank you for this time together, and <clears throat> I thank you for these students. Lord, I thank you for the scripture um, that you've given us, your word. God, like Brandon said, I, I thank you for not being a reckless God in your love, but being precise in your love, though sometimes for us it feels reckless. Lord, thank you, God, for uh, saving us, um, for Jesus, for offering us salvation. Lord, I ask that you would just speak through me, um, that it would not be my words, uh, but yours that are heard, um, and that uh, 
these students, these young men, these young women who uh, are getting ready to um, be in a place where they enter serious relationship where, uh, that will affect the rest of their life, that you would just um, be in this time, that you'd be blessing them with the message you have. Uh, we love you. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so, what you need to know, dating subject, often students love to hear about it. They're interested in it. Often, youth pastors, it's like our biggest hesitation. <clears throat> and the reason why, because like every youth pastor who's been in ministry for a few years, and I told you all this at the beginning, has seen this play out in youth groups where students begin to date one another. They begin to then cross emotional barriers. They begin to cross physical barriers. <clears throat> and then what do you know? They're not really honoring the Lord with their relationship and their relationship ends. And because of the history that they have created in their relationship, that when it ends, it doesn't end well. And most of the time, if not like 90% of the time, one or both people stop coming to youth group. They stop being a part of the church. They stop um, being in a place where they can find peace and find rest because of the awkwardness and the hurt that was caused in that relationship and fear of seeing that other person. Or they have abandoned all friendships and they've abandoned all other relationships. <clears throat> and so when they break up or when things don't work out, they don't have a whole lot of people they feel like they can turn to because they put a relationship before everything else. And they've held this relationship up as, as the place they should be at. And so then what happens then is Satan uses this relationship to pull you and the, the death of the relationship to pull you further from Jesus. That he uses your innocent starting relationship as a tool to separate you from truth and from life. <clears throat> and so it scares me to death when I see and hear of y'all like, man, I love her, I love him, like we together, like this is great, oh my goodness, right? Like, shut up, like stop, you're gonna make a mistake. It scares me. Now, the off chance is that your relationship is going to last and you will treat it right. And the relationships, here's what I don't have a problem with, are relationships that are Christ-centered, that students have, that you guys have, that are, are truly pure, that you keep them pure and you're honoring the Lord with them and you're not just clung together, but you are hanging out with everybody and you are honoring God with your relationship. Those I'm like totally in support of. I'm about it. I'm not a relationship Nazi, but most of the time it's not that way. And so it scares me to death, especially now because relationships have changed. Like they're not the same as even they were kind of when I was growing up and they're not the same as like when my parents were growing up. <laughs> like for instance, when I was in high school, I liked this girl and she was pretty or whatever. And, and then there's this other girl and I was kind of talking. I, I like this girl, I was kind of talking to her. But then there's this other girl. And I was like, man, she's kind of pretty too. <clears throat> and I would love to talk to her. And, but, I, but, but I'm still not sure about this girl, right? Hey, I don't know if you've ever been in that place where you're like, ah, okay, like someone new is on scene. Um, well, I went to my mom and I, and I was just kind of telling her about my dilemma. And she said, well, why can't you just date both of them? And I said, I said, what? And she said, yeah, when I was in high school, like if you weren't like officially going out with someone, you could date someone on Friday night and date someone else on Saturday night. And then it occurred to me, my mom is a player. <laughs> Dang, what? Oh my gosh, I said, mom, I don't think that was ever okay. And she's like, no, no, of course it was. And I was like, dude, you're a player. And then weirdly, weirdly, I was proud of her. I was a little bit proud of her, right? Like, all right, mom, um, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Uh, so <clears throat> anyways, <laughs> that's my mom. <laughs> uh, she's a player. All right, so what, but what's changed really is like cell phones have changed the game uh, kind of in a big way. <laughs> That a lot of you, I was right here, a lot of you um, don't like, like your relationship started on a cell phone. 
like it started with a text or it started with like an Instagram DM or a Snapchat, that, that this relationship started with, with social media connecting the highway of love with one another. And shh, I can hear you from up here. That's not good. Um, and, and you began this relationship. And, and a, lot of, a lot of the ways that you profess your feelings for this other person are through social media. Um, or, and that's the way you receive a lot of it. Uh, the whole picture thing, you know that's like a, a sketchy deal going on. Uh, like social media, like it's really killed it, right? And then a relationship is not official, right? When is a relationship official? It's when you like make an Instagram post about it or a Snapchat post about it, right? Like it ain't official until they're on my story. Then they know and all my friends know this is my man, right? Because he's on my story now. So now we are like a little more than talking. We may be even almost dating. Boom. And so we've got like, we've got like this, this pattern where we are becoming like less and less upfront with one another, maybe a little more um, behind the scenes that people are maybe talking in this room, but we don't even know about it because it's all over the phone. And yet, I remember even talking to a dude, he was like, yeah, me and that girl are talking. I'm like, well, why aren't you talking to each other? Like, oh no, we are, we text though. I haven't said anything to her in person yet. Like, what? You're in the same room. Like, no, no, we're not at that level yet. <clears throat> and so, hold on, hold on, I'm going somewhere with this. <clears throat> but then what we've also done as a culture, here's where it gets real. What we've also done as a culture is then, so we have talking and then we have kind of dating and then we have going out. And, and here's the problem with really going out, man, that's my girlfriend, that's my boyfriend, is that in going out, we've also um, began to do a lot of things that used to be not socially normal. This whole thought of saving um, ourselves until marriage has really kind of become the cultural uh, like weird thing to do. Like it's not culturally normal, it's not socially normal, that the normal thing to do now is when you're going out with someone to show them you truly love them, you give your whole self to them. That we begin to do things with people that usually and biblically were reserved for marriage. And so here's what's happened then is then we begin to do physical things, but then, okay, now we really wanna see if we'd work good and be compatible in marriage, so let's live together. And so now we're living together, we're doing physical things, and everything in our life looks like we're married. This is what your culture is saying. This is what your friends will do or are kind of building their way up to doing. You know it's true. That is, is what everyone says is, is normal and is okay. That we've elevated dating with marriage. Not a lie, I was sitting in my house yesterday preparing for this morning on my couch, screen door open, the house across the street from me, um, it's kind of like cockeyed because it's like on a corner right there and so I can see into their backyard. They don't have, yeah, right? They don't have a fence. No, trust me. Yeah. They don't have a fence. I look over, legit a wedding's happening in their backyard. Oh, sweet. So of course I grab my computer, I get out on the porch, and I'm like, I'm watching this wedding, like it's free. And so um, I'm sitting on the porch, homeboy, not anything against long hair, but the groom has hair down to like the middle of his back. The bride comes out, I see her first. I see her first because she comes out of the front door. They're around the back of the house. She comes out of the front door and I get a side, I can see front and backyard. And I was, I'm like, what's this lady doing? The reason I didn't recognize it was the bride was because she was wearing a dress that was black top, purple bottom with sparkles. I was like, oh, someone's going to prom. Oh no, that is the bride. She walks around the side of the house, Lord of the Rings theme song music comes on. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Walks to the front. I'm like, what? I have time to take two pictures send them to my wife and say, you're missing this right now. <laughs> 10 minutes, I hear cheering. I look up, they're making out. Wedding is over. 
10 minutes. Here is what kills me. They've been living in that house as long as I have, and I thought they were married. What surprised me the most was that they weren't married. It wasn't the Lord of the Rings theme song. Purple dress was pretty up there. But really what surprised me the most was they weren't married. Their life looked exactly like my life. It was a man and a woman living in a house. They had three fur babies. That's the weirdest name, dude. They had three dogs, but they, I guarantee, consider them their children. And except they don't change their diapers. They ain't real children. And, and their life looked exactly like my life. That's where our culture's going. And not a single person at that wedding said anything about it. Not one person said, whoa. No, that is what is going as normal these days. Is that culture is sending us to a place where we have elevated dating to the place of marriage. And as a result, that now we get into marriage not as a step up in intimacy, a step up in commitment, a step up in love, a step up in what we are to do biblically and be bonded to someone in the way that the Bible says that there is no other bond between two people that is more intimate and stronger than marriage, that affects the soul more deeply than marriage. Two people being cleaved together That instead of taking a step up to that from dating and engaged to marriage, we now have elevated dating to the same level as marriage. And so instead of taking a step up, we take a step over. That it is not a a change in how how we are acting, but it is a change in simply title. That I was dating, I got a ring, I'm married. And that our life looks exactly the same. Saddest thing ever, right before we were going to bed, it was like 10 something. My wife looks out the window. I said, hey, what's going on out there? Are they still partying? And she said, no, the groom is cleaning up his own wedding. Because he had it at his own house where he'd already lived together, he did not take a step up in something special. He took a step over. And so we've, we've began to make dating equivalent to marriage. And as a result, then we get into marriage very lightly. And now we also get out of marriage very lightly. And you see statistically divorce rates climbing because of where we've elevated marriage to is the same as dating. And the Bible says nothing about that. But that is not the natural place for a dating relationship. That that is the natural place for a marriage relationship, but not a dating relationship. And so what we've done then is we've maximized the joy we expect to receive out of our dating. And it has become the most joyful part of our relationships. But dating is not meant to be the most joyful part of your relationship. I'm gonna say that again. The dating relationship you are in is not meant to be the most joyful part of your relationship. That marriage should be filled with so much more joy. That it should be joyful, but marriage should be so much better. Dating is not meant to be the most enjoyable part of your relationship that it should be fun and it should be cool, that we should really have joy in it. But we have begun to make dating the most joyful part. The Bible says, no, I've reserved that. God says, I've reserved that for marriage. And so I I encourage you as as we think about tonight, as we look into Scripture where we're elevating our dating relationships to. That the things and the lines we're putting and what we're committing to do with another person. See, there is a place for dating that God created, I think, and allows us to have a dating relationship where we can build a sturdy foundation for marriage. 
not, and we're gonna get into this in a minute, not a practice for marriage, but we're building a sturdy foundation as we head toward marriage. Here's the thing though, I wanna talk about what it looks like. I'm gonna talk to you ladies first, and then I'm gonna talk to you guys. What it looks like to be someone who is ready to begin to date and then to get married. And I don't mean right now, so don't be like freaking out, like, dude, how old does he think we are? Like, I, I do not mean like, hey, I want you to get ready uh, to date and then married so that by the time you graduate, you got that ring on it, right? Like, no, like no plans in that, take your time. I was talking to a middle school student, and they're like, hey, you know, talking about their relationship or whatever, and I said, let's say you got married for 20, uh, you got married at 22, when do you, how long do you think you're gonna be married for? She's like, well, the rest of my life. I said, okay, great. So let's say uh, you live to 100. That's 78 years. So why rush it now, right? Like 78 years, like you don't need 79 or 81. Like it's okay, right? Like take your time now. And so there's a place for dating to prepare us for marriage, not to rush marriage. And so ladies, here's what it says. This is Ephesians uh, Ephesians 5, 22 through 24. And it's talking about what it looks like to be a wife. What it looks like to be someone who says, man, this is who I, I am preparing to be in my dating relationship and in my marriage. Because here's what I want you to understand real quick before we dump, jump into this. Is the best you are in dating or, or who you are in dating, excuse me, who you are in dating is the best you will be in marriage. I wanna, I wanna say that one more time. Who you are in your dating relationship is the best you'll be in marriage. Who your partner is in their dating relationship is the best you'll be in marriage. Going through a marriage ceremony, clicking off a, a, a check mark, man, I'm married now, I got my ring, I'm here, does not make you a different person. It does not create some magical thing inside of you where you begin to love so much better and have so much more joy. The best person in marriage is who they are when they're dating. Who you are when you're dating is the best you'll be in your marriage. At its best, not the worst, not the least, but the best. Because in marriage, you begin to be tested even harder in your patience, in your kindness, in your endurance, in your selflessness, in all of these things. That they just get more and more. That it is still joy-filled, but it's not an easier relationship. It's a relationship that has a much bigger commitment. It's a lot harder. And so understanding what it takes to be someone who is a good spouse is important now to prepare for as you begin to date. Because who you are in dating is the best you'll be in marriage, not something better later on. This is what it says. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. His body of which he is the savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives, you should submit to their husbands in everything. Guys, don't even think about whispering something stupid to a girl next to you because you're about to get like nailed in just a minute. Just no, just, you just wanna shut your mouth for a second. Just don't say anything because that girl is gonna come back at you hard in a minute. All right. What are you saying, ladies? He's saying a wife who is a good wife is someone who can submit to their husband in the same way that they are submitting to the Lord's will in their life. That the way that you submit to the Lord's will in your life, it will be reflected in how you will submit to your husband. That this word isn't submit as in, I'm just gonna bow down and do whatever you say and whatever you want. 
No, it's submit as in, I will submit to your authority that if you say, hey, I feel the Lord calling us to move, I'm gonna pray about it and I'm gonna follow your lead ultimately. Hey, if you say, I feel like we're called to go here or go there or do this or do that, I'm going to submit to your calling, allowing you to be the head of the household as God has, has designed and I am going to be the one that supports you and, and helps you and submits to, to whatever the Lord is calling you to do. This is not like a, a man beating a woman's submission, a sinful submission. It's not that at all. It's as a man leads you in the way of the Lord that you follow willingly, that you follow lovingly, that you follow kindly, and that you will learn to do this as you grow in doing this. As you learn to submit to the Lord, you will learn to submit to a husband. I hate that word submit, I'm gonna be honest with you, because it makes it, it's a bad connotation. But it's a, it's a, a following, an understanding, a trusting of your husband as you trust the Lord. All right, so guys, here's what, here's what I got for you. And we're gonna come back to that in just a minute. It says, husbands, love your wives. Dang, we were running so late. As just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. And go on, let's go to the next one. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies who love, he who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one has ever hated his own body, but feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church. For we are members of this body, of his body. He says, in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as Christ loved the church. So men, he says, women, I want you to submit to a husband. And the husband he's talking about is a man who says, I will, I will sacrifice for my wife and my family the way that Jesus Christ died on the cross for the church. That is a full sacrifice, a selfless sacrifice, one that says my desires are not the utmost desires anymore, that her desires go above my desires, that, that her uh, safety goes above my safety, that her preferences go above my preferences, that her life comes before my life. That the man, ladies, that he is saying you are to submit to is a man who says, and I will sacrifice everything for that woman. That I will sacrifice everything for her. That's the kind of man that, that we are called to be men. Men that say, man, Lord's will comes first and my wife comes second. And like I said, who you are when you're dating is the best you'll be when you're married. And so I want you to consider your relationships that guys, that the girl you're interested in and the girl you're pursuing or the girl that you're in relationship with is not submitting to the Lord's will, is not actively seeking God's plan for her life, is not trusting him and finding identity in him, then she is not ready for a relationship. She is not ready for marriage. She does not need to be dated in this moment because she has not learned to first submit to the Lord. And so your relationship will not be one that is honoring to God because you haven't learned how to honor God with your own life first. And ladies, if you are looking at a man and pursuing a man or in relationship with a man who will not sacrifice for the church, who does not serve the church, who does not love people well, who doesn't open a door for somebody, who doesn't say yes ma'am and no ma'am and yes sir and no sir, who does not put other people's desires before himself, then he is not ready for a relationship because the best he will be in marriage is who he is, who he is when he's dating. And so while dating, if he cannot 
put you first, if he cannot put other people first, if he cannot love others well, if he doesn't love his family well, if he doesn't follow God's calling in his life, then he will never put you first. He will never honor you the way God intended. That you will put yourself in a place where you are set up for regret and for uh, mistakes, for scars, for, for bad times. He says, man, these are the types of people we are to be looking for. That as we date, we are not dating as a practice for marriage. You know, dating as a practice for marriage sets us up for divorce because what do you learn to do? You learn to break up with people. You learn to date someone for a little while, get fed up with them and break up with them. That dating is not the practice for marriage. Dating is seeing someone who is marriage material, who says, man, this guy loves Jesus and he serves people well and loves them well. And from what I can tell being his friend, that he loves and serves me well, that's someone I wanna consider dating to see if this is who God has me to marry. And guys, dating is not a practice for marriage. It is you finding a woman who says, man, she submits to God's will. She loves the Lord. What comes first in her life is not her and her style and her beauty and and her popularity. What comes first in her life is God's will in her life. And then you see her and say, man, what comes first in her life is God's will in her life. I want to consider dating her because she is marriage material. And as we both pursue the Lord in our dating relationship, we wanna hear from God and see if this is the person he has for us. That it is a place of purity and a place of growth where we learn to endure with one another, but also where we are prepared beforehand to continue to grow in our relationship if it leads to marriage. Too many people, too many teenagers right now are haphazardly dating. And we're growing up to be a bunch of people who are scarred and bruised and full of regret. And the total opposite of what the Lord has planned for your life, of the intentions God has for you. Now again, I just wanna reiterate that our God is a God of grace, that there's nothing you've done that's too bad or too big or or too nasty or, or, or too shameful for him to say, man, no, you find forgiveness in me that you are presenting that, that because of Jesus's sacrifice for the church, which is you, I see you as spotless without blemish, but holy and blameless. That's Jesus' work in our lives. So I, I want you to know that because of Jesus, we get a fresh start. That you get a fresh start to start trying to be these people to saying, God, create me into this kind of person. Build me into this kind of person. And that you don't have to begin to date to start being this kind of person right now. That you don't have to date to prepare for marriage, that that you can prepare for marriage without dating. I want you to hear that. You can prepare for marriage now without dating. That's such a lie. I gotta prepare for marriage by dating. No, you don't. You prepare for marriage now by ladies learning to love Jesus and follow his will for your life above all else. That when you can do that, you'll bless your marriage, you'll bless your future relationships, that the Lord will use you in mighty ways. And guys, Learn to serve others. Learn to be a leader. Learn to to put others' desires above yourself. That has nothing to do with dating how you prepare for marriage now. I want you to hear that. That the Lord protects us, I believe. We get protected from regret, from mistakes, from, from things, that from breaking other people's hearts when we prepare for marriage before we begin to date. And then when we begin to date, it's to see if God has that person for us. And so as we close, I just encourage you to consider your relationships that you would begin to look at them through the lens of this truth and and ask yourself, man, is this the person God has for me right now? 
It may be a wrong relationship or it may be a right relationship, wrong time. And then to ask yourself, are you ready for that relationship? Are you in a place, I know no one's perfect, but are you in a place where you're submitting to the Lord's will? Where you're submitting to what God has planned? 